Hello everyone, now let us discuss about 2023 ICD-10 CM coding guidelines for neoplasms part 2. In the previous session, we have discussed about admission and encounter for the treatment of primary site, admission and encounter for the treatment of secondary site, and coding and sequencing of complications. This, these three points are covered in part 1. In the current session, we will be focusing on primary malignancy previously excised, admission and encounters involving chemotherapy, immunotherapy and radiation therapy, admissions or encounter to determine the extent of malignancy, signs, symptoms and abnormal findings listed in the chapter 18 associated with neoplasm, admission or encounter for pain control or management, Malignancy in two or more non-contiguous sites. Disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified. And malignant neoplasm without specification of sites. Till point 11 we will discuss here. And the rest will be discussed in part 3. And this is the new guideline. Secondary malignant neoplasm of lymphoid tissue. That we will discuss in the next part. So first coming to primary malignancy previously excised. What is the coding guideline for that? When a primary malignancy has been previously excised or eradicated from its site and there is no further treatment directed to that site and there is no evidence of any existing primary malignancy at that site. Then a code from the category Z85 is nothing but personal history of malignant neoplasm should be used to indicate that former site of malignancy. So whenever there is no further treatment or cancer has been eradicated, quote from the personal history of malignancy, category Z85 should be used. Any mention of extension, invasion or metastasis to another site is coded as secondary malignant neoplasm to that site. And the secondary site may be the principal or first listed with Z9, Z, Z85 code as secondary. When the cancer has been eradicated and no further treatment is directed, then you must use the personal history of malignant neoplasm category, Z85 codes. Whenever there is metastasis or invasion or extension, then that another site will be coded as secondary malignant neoplasm and this will be the PDX followed by Z85 series as SDX. Now let us see an example. History of lung cancer left upper lobectomy 18 months ago with no current treatment. MRI of the brain shows metastatic disease of brain. Here previously patient was having lung cancer and now he is not taking any treatment for that. But the MRI shows metastatic neoplasm of brain. So this will be the PDX C79.31 secondary malignant neoplasm of brain followed by Z85.118 personal history of malignant neoplasm of bronchus or lung. Now coming to admissions or encounters involving chemotherapy, immunotherapy and radiation therapy. This is subcategorized into three three points or three guidelines. First one is episode of care involving surgical removal of neoplasm. The next is patient's admission or encounter solely for the administration of chemotherapy, immunotherapy and ra radiation therapy and or radiation therapy. And next is patient admitted for radiation therapy or chemotherapy or immunotherapy and develops complications. So, these three points are covered in this particular thing. Admissions and encounter involving chemotherapy, immunotherapy and radiation therapy. First, let us discuss about episode of care involving surgical removal of neoplasm. When an episode of care involves surgical removal of neoplasm, primary or secondary site, followed by adjunct chemotherapy or radiation therapy during the same episode of care, then the code for the neoplasm should be assigned as PDX or first listed diagnosis. Patient, his patient is having neoplasm and he is undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy. But 
the episode of care is surgical removal of neoplasm whenever episode of care involves surgical removal of neoplasm whether it can be primary or secondary followed by adjuvant chemotherapy or radiation therapy during the same episode of care then code for neoplasm should be assigned as pdx coming to next guideline that is patients admission or encounter solely for administration of chemotherapy immunotherapy or radiation therapy whenever the admission or encounter is for administration of either chemotherapy immunotherapy or radiation therapy then codes from the category z51 will take the precedence that is they are coded as pdx followed by malignancy codes as sdx whenever the episode of care is for surgical removal of neoplasm there malignancy is pdx but second case is whenever the patient's admission or encounter is purely for the administration of either radiation chemotherapy or immunotherapy then the pdx should be from z51 category z51.10 indicates anti neoplastic radiation therapy z51.11 indicates anti neoplastic chemotherapy and z51.12 indicates anti neoplastic immunotherapy and if the patient receives one or more of of these therapies during the same admission more than one code can be used and malignancy should be coded as sdx now let us see an example patient presents for second round of rituximab and fludarabine for his chronic b cell lymphocytic leukemia here he is solely presenting for the administration of chemotherapy and immunotherapy then category z51.11 and z51.12 will be the pdx z51.11 indicates encounter for anti neoplastic chemotherapy and z51.12 indicates encounter for anti neoplastic immunotherapy and c91.10 this is the malignancy code which is coded as sdx chronic lymphocytic leukemia of b cell type not having achieved remission here rituximab comes under anti neoplastic immunotherapy and fludarabine comes under anti neoplastic chemotherapy so whenever the admission is solely either immunotherapy chemotherapy or radiation therapy then categories from z51 will take the pdx followed by neoplasm codes which take the sdx next guideline is patients admission or encounter solely for insertion of radioactive elements if the patient's admission or encounter is for the insertion or implantation of radioactive elements such as brachytherapy then the appropriate code from malignancy are sequenced as pdx and code z51.0 should not be assigned z51.0 should not be assigned because here insertion of radioactive elements it is not radiation therapy insertion of radioactive elements then malignancy should be coded first and code z51.0 should not be assigned coming to next guideline patient admitted for radiation therapy chemotherapy or immunotherapy and develops complications when the patient is admitted for the purpose of external beam radio radiotherapy or immunotherapy or chemotherapy and develops complications such as uncontrolled nausea and vomiting or dehydration then the pdx should be z51.0 or z51.11 or z51.12 followed by codes for complication this is important whenever patient is admitted for either radiation therapy chemotherapy or immunotherapy and develops complications then also pdx should be chemotherapy radiation therapy and immunotherapy followed by complication codes next guideline is patient admitted for insertion of radioactive elements and develops complications when the patient is admitted for the purpose of insertion or implantation of radioactive elements example brachytherapy and develops complications such as uncontrolled nausea vomiting or dehydration then 
PDX should be appropriate code for malignancy followed by any code for complications. If the complication develops after the insertion of radioactive elements, then PDX should be appropriate code for mal malignancy followed by codes for complication. That is the guideline. Here you can see the overall summary of what we have discussed in the admission or encounters involving chemotherapy, immunotherapy and radiation therapy. If the episode of care involves surgical removal of neoplasm, then code for neoplasm should be assigned as PDX or first listed D diagnosis. Second case is patient's admission or encounter solely for administration of chemotherapy, immunotherapy and radiation therapy. Encounter for administration administration should be the pdx either it can be radiation therapy chemotherapy or immunotherapy then malignancy is coded as sdx second case is insertion of implantation of radioactive elements such as brachytherapy in case of brachytherapy appropriate code of malignancy should be pdx Next case, patient admission admitted for radiation therapy, chemotherapy or immunotherapy and develops complications. Here, when, we, when the patient comes for chemotherapy or immunotherapy or radiation therapy and develops complications, then also PDX should be administration of either chemotherapy, radiation therapy or immunotherapy. Then complications should be SDX. Second case is in case of radioactive elements. There malignancy should be the PDX followed by complications as SDX. Coming to the next guideline, admission or encounter to determine extent of malignancy. When the reason, reason for admission or encounter is to determine the extent of malignancy or for a procedure such as parasynthesis or thoracosynthesis. The primary malignancy or appropriate metastatic site is designated as PDX. Whenever reason for visit is to determine the extent of malignancy, then primary malignancy or appropriate metastatic site should be designated as PDX or first listed, even though chemotherapy or radiation therapy are administered. This is important. Whenever the reason for visit is extent, determination of extent of malignancy, then malignancy will take the precedence. Though the patient is undergoing or administered chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Now what is parasynthesis and thoracosynthesis? This is just information. Parasynthesis is form of body fluid sampling procedure generally referred to peritoneosynthesis also called as laprosynthesis or abdominal parasynthesis in which peritoneal cavity is punctured by a needle to sample peritoneal fluid. It is used for number of reasons that is to relieve abdominal pressure from ascites to diagnose spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and other infections for example abdominal TB to diagnose metastatic cancer to diagnose blood in peritoneal space in trauma. Next is thoracentesis is a procedure in which a needle is inserted into the pleural space between the lungs and chest for body fluid sampling. Synthesis means to puncture. Now let us see an example. A patient with left lung cancer with malignant pleural effusion being seen for parasynthesis and initiation or administration of chemotherapy. Here the reason for visit is parasynthesis. So malignancy should be coded first. C34.91 malignant neoplasm of unspecified part of left bronchus or lung followed by J91.0 malignant pleural effusion and then followed by Z51.11 encounter for antineoplastic chemotherapy. One more reason why malignancy is coded first is here the reason for visit is malignant pleural effusion. If you see the tabular list of malignant pleural effusion, there you can find code first the neoplasm. For that reason, before J91.0, we are coding the neoplasm. 
Next guideline, symptoms, signs and abnormal findings listed in chapter 18 associated with neoplasm. When symptoms, signs or ill-defined conditions listed in chapter 18 characteristic of or associated with an existing primary or secondary site malignancy, they cannot be used as PDX or first listed diagnosis regardless of number of admissions or encounter for the treatment of care for neoplasm. Symptoms, signs and ill-defined conditions can never be PDX or first listed diagnosis. Next is admission or encounter for pain control or management. Neoplasm related pain. Code G89.3 is assigned to pain documented as being related or associated due to cancer, primary or secondary malignancy or tumor. This code is assigned regardless of whether the pain is acute or chronic. And this code may be assigned as PDX or first listed code when the reason for visit is pain control or management and the underlying neoplasm should be reported as additional diagnosis. Whenever, for, whenever the reason for visit is pain control or manage, pain management, then G89.3 that is pain associated with malignancy should be the PDX followed by malignancy codes as SDX provided the reason for visit should be pain control or management. Now coming to next guideline malignancy in two or more non-contiguous sites that is non-continuous sites. A patient may have more than one malignant tumor in the same organ and these tumors may represent different primaries or metastatic diseases depending upon the site. If the documentation is unclear Provider should be queried as to the status of each tumor so that correct codes can be assigned. Next is disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified. Comes under the category C80.0. Disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified is used for those cases where patient has advanced metastatic disease and no known primary or secondary sites are specified. Disseminated malignant neoplasm C80.0 is used only in those cases where patient has advanced metastatic disease and no known primary or secondary sites are specified. It should not be used in place of assigning the codes for primary sites and all known secondary sites. Patient must have advanced metastatic disease and there is no known primary or secondary sites. In that case, we can assign C80.0 that is disseminated malignant neoplasm unspecified. Coming to next guideline, malignant neoplasm without specification of site. Code 80.1 malignant or primary neoplasm, specifically primary neoplasm unspecified equates to cancer and noise. This code should not be used when no determination can be made as to the primary site of malignancy. And this should be rarely used in inpatient setting. Let us see an example. Evaluation of painful hip leads to diagnosis of metastatic lesion from an unknown primary neoplasm source. In that case, first you need to quote metastatic lesion that is C79.51, secondary malignant neoplasm of bone, followed by C80.1, malignant neoplasm unspecified, that is cancer and noise. Here, primary neoplasm is unknown. Then you can quote NOS. But this should not be used in inpatient setting. This should be rarely used in inpatient setting. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and CPC training.